Hi, uh, good morning. Today we're gonna be looking at adaptations, all right? And today we need to um, really look at two main ideas, okay? The first is being able to identify the three different types of adaptations. There's um, structural, behavioral, and physiological. And then also sort of notice how different environments lead to different adaptations or different niches or different lifestyles in that environment lead to different um, adaptations, okay? So there's different types are structural, and these are what it sounds like. These are traits that involve the physical structure of an organism. It could be like thorns on a, on a rose bush or beaks of a bird, teeth of a bear, teeth of a shark, you know, some kind of structural thing. Like we have an imposable thumb with humans, that type of stuff. Right? And mimicry also falls under structural. Mimicry is when non-poisonous organisms look like poisonous organisms. A great example is the coral snake and the king snake. The coral snake is deadly to humans. The king snake is harmless. Its, its venom is not, not venomous. Right? Uh, physical features that allow them to survive. I mean, it's how they eat, how they get around, that type of stuff. Physiological, sounds like physical, but it's a little bit different. These are traits that involve some kind of chemistry inside of your body. All right, for humans, that's like the enzymes and the saliva that digest our food. Um, for a snake, the venom that they make, the protein in a spider's webs, those are all made like chemistry that's made inside the body. So physiological, something happens inside the body. Like a, the poison from a tree frog that secretes through their skin, that is like one of the most fatal poisons on the planet. It's that's physiological. And then behavioral is responses to your environment. So say it's cold outside and you put a sweater on that is behavioral. How birds migrate south for the winter. That is behavioral. All right. Wolves communicate through howling. That's behavioral. All right. So the rest of this is just looking at like some of the different examples how bees communicate with one another behavioral. Um, there are things that have both like when possums play dead or playing possum really. So possums, the only marsupial in the U S but they, when they're frightened, they act like they're dead. They play dead. All right. And there's two different things. It's behavioral, the action of doing that, but it's also physiological because their body makes this in their chemistry and this other body makes a, a hormone that slows their breathing down, slows their heart rate down. It slows their whole body process down so that they can lay so still. All right. So that one, you can be behavioral and physiological, right? Uh, structural, it's a memory mimicry. So the orchid here looks like a bee. That's actually a flower, right? But it does it to attract the male bees, which are the pollinators. Structural, the long neck of a giraffe. Physiological, venom of a snake. Long bur bee uh, beaks. Fat reserves, all right? So if you're like, like penguins, whales, any other, even big grizzly bears, polar bears, they reserve fat. That's chemistry, okay? All right, so being big boned, <laughs> that is structural. But being ha ha reserving fat would be physiological. Uh, flying, that's structural. They have those wings. The ability to change colors, that's a chemistry, right? That's your body doing something chemistry. That's behavioral and chemistry, really. So it's, you're, you're doing it to blend in, but it's physiological that your body's doing it. Remember the protein in the spider's webs. Mimicry, looking like a leaf. That is structural. Migrating south owner. Mimicry. <clears throat> Quill is a defense thing. The ink that the octopus makes, that's physiological. 